everybody and welcome to another episode of Ubar. Today we are going to talk what happens when an event cannot be delivered using Event Bridge. So I have made up to now two videos on Event Bridge, one about what is Event Bridge, one about API destinations, but I always talk about the happy cases when the events go through, find their way and everything is good. In this episode, I want to talk about dead letter queues. And this is the mechanism that Event Bridge has in order to handle events that could not get to the target. In an event-driven architecture, it's impossible to guarantee that all the events are going to get to the destination. There can be so many reasons why things are not delivered. For example, there is some permission misconfiguration or the target is down or in the case of API destinations, as we will see in the demo I will show now, uh, the URL is not existent and you're sending it somewhere wrong. Um, there can be networking issues and all of that. Event Bridge by default will try to retry the sending of the message. If you don't do anything, it will try to up to 24 hours, up to 180 times to send this message. There is the exponential backoff with Cheater. I leave you the article that Mark Brooker wrote about it, explaining what that means and what is the mathematical things, but meaning that you're not kind of bombarding the uh, target. But you can always configure that and you can decide what is your retry policy. You can say that you will try for the next 60 seconds because your event might have a kind of time where it's valid and then it doesn't work anymore. Or you can try for five times so you don't bombard the target. You can decide that and I will show you in this video how to do that. But after that retry happens and I don't know, you try for one minute and a couple of times and still the event cannot be sent, what event bridge does? Well, if you don't do anything, it drops the message. The message is lost. So to avoid losing messages, what it's recommended is to add a dead letter Q, Q, <laughs> uh, SQSQ uh, into your rules. So for each of the rules, you can attach a queue that will get all the drop messages that could not happen. So you can decide some, some targets are very reliable, so you might not need this, but some targets, if you're using, for example, API destinations, when you're relying on a third party, you might have throttles, you might have network issues, you might have all kinds of problems because you are not controlling that third party. Uh, you want to make sure that all your events uh, will reach the destination eventually and the ones that are not reached, you capture them somehow. So this letter Q is a common mechanism. You can find it uh, other places. So I never talk about this, but let me know if you're interested in the Lambda dead letter queues, in um, how to handle queues with dead letter queues. There, there is a whole paradigms on event-driven architecture where you need to use these queues. So let me know if you want to know more about these queues. But in this case, in event bridge is a simple queue that you attach to a rule. When messages cannot be sent, they're dropped there. And then you can do whatever you want with the messages there. You can um, attach a Lambda function that when a message arrives to that letter Q does something. Uh, you can attach a Lambda function. So for example, to the CloudWatch metric, um, there is the CloudWatch metric for the dead letter Q in each of the event bridge uh, rules that you can attach if the trigger goes to this level, trigger a Lambda function, do something, send an alarm, or things like that. So now let's go to the code and see how we can configure a dead letter Q in our target pool. So before getting into the code and all these things, give me a like if you are interested in this type of content. I want to know if I'm doing things right. Let me know with a like or ask me your questions in the comments. Subscribe to this channel. Most of you are not subscribed but are watching this. So let's go. So now let's go to the code and um, I will be starting from the Sam Event Bridge video two, that is the API Gateway Destination Code. So if you have not watched that video, you can watch it. Uh, the link is in the description box, but 
Also, the initial code is there. We are in this GitHub branch video two, so that's where I'm going to start. So if you open the repo, go to the branch video two, you will find the code. Make sure that you have the order manager and the blue dragon, that is the one that we are going to work with. And uh, I will assume that you have deployed already the order manager. It needs to be deployed. The blue dragon, it doesn't matter because we are going to deploy it together, but the order manager, it needs to be deployed and it needs to be running and you need to have the URL uh, and make sure that you can call it because that's kind of the starting for this thing. If you don't have a clue and you want to get started with this tutorial from the beginning, I recommend you to watch the uh, first video on this series about getting started with Eventbridge, where we build this uh, demo that is like um, Deliveroo, Uber Eats, uh, World, wherever you are in the world, up, basically a um, centralized place where customers can make uh, orders to their favorite restaurants to get it delivered. So all the links are in the description box. So now let's get started with the code. I will be adding the dead letter Q to the Blue Dragon restaurant. This Blue Dragon restaurant is the one that has the API destinations configured. And why I'm using this? Because it's the easiest to make sure that fails. When you have a third party um, call, it can fail all the time. So it's very easy to simulate a failure and we can see the dead letter queues in action. So let's clone that repo, deploy the order manager and go to the Visual Studio Code or whatever is your favorite IDE. There we will open the Blue Dragon template and we will start working in there. The first thing we are going to do is to add a dead letter Q to the rule. So to the rule definition that we did uh, in the API uh, destinations definition, there we are going to add the dead letter Q. So whenever the rule is configured, there will be a Q there saying that if the message cannot reach its destination after the retries, then uh, please send it to this place. Also in the rule, we are going to configure the retry policy. So you can see there that I'm first uh, adding the uh, rule for the dead letter configuration. It's as simple as putting this dead letter config and then the ARN, uh, Amazon resource name of the queue we want as a dead letter queue. It's a normal SQS queue, so we will create that in a second. And then uh, you can have as well there the retry policy. Uh, in here, the retry policy is a very simple one. It will try for 60 seconds and then it will retry a maximum of four times in those 60 seconds. So that's kind of uh, how this will happen after those 60 seconds. if they cannot send the message, it will kind of come to the key. So good, we have that in place. The next thing we want to do is to define the uh, queue. So I will do it at the bottom of this template YAML file. And there I will add a very simple SQS queue with no properties whatsoever, just the queue. It's a standard queue. You can configure something if you need to, but I'm, I'm just going with the standard queue. And then the thing we need is the permissions for uh, event bridge to put messages in a queue, to send messages to the queue. So we need to also add that permission. As you know, all AWS resources are born without permissions. And in order to do something, they need to have uh, the permissions in place. So here we can see this policy and it's basically uh, giving the property on the events and then it's allowing you to send a message to that the letter Q. Good. So now we have everything we need and we can deploy this and see how the queue is configured and where it is and how to make things fail. For deploying, some deploy. Uh, if you deploy this for the first time, that's just guided. I will just deploy and we will see in the other side when this is finally deployed. So after this is deployed, now we can go and see everything in action in our um, 
event bridge application, we can go to rule, we can go to destination, and we can uh, see that there is the dead letter Q. One thing you will need to do in order for this to fail, in your API destination, you will need to change that endpoint to something that is broken. So I will show you how to do that in a second. We are not going to do that as infrastructure as code, so we will edit it from the console, but I want to show you how this fail. Then you can see if you go to the simple queue service that there is one queue there that is that uh, that letter queue uh, is configured. It doesn't have any messages because we have not sent anything yet. Uh, then we have the CloudWatch. I'm opening that because I want to show you the metrics. When things get into the queue and invoke the queue or trigger the queue, they will uh, put um, a message in, in a particular metric. So you can basically search for the name of the rule. I just putting blue dragon and then I'm going to events by rule name and there I can see the metrics. There's many because I have deployed this with the same name multiple times. So I will need to put a more specific name to find the exact rule, but we will do that when we uh, run the rule for the first time and the metric appear because for now still it's not there uh, because we have not run this. So I will be editing the API destination and for the endpoint, I will be just grabbing the URL that the order manager deploys. Uh, I will go to, to there, get the URL, and then I will put a path, uh, a HTTP method that doesn't exist. In this case, it will be a delete. So I know this is going somewhere where there will be an error return put any URL, but you need to make sure that the URL kind of is well formatted and all those things. So uh, the validations from API destinations work. So that works. If you do it that way, you will see it fail. So now we can go and run our um, order manager that will put an event in event bridge and it will trigger this API destination that is broken. So we can see that the blue dragon is configured. It's getting the status 200 because this is all asynchronous. It doesn't know that the event could not be delivered. But if we go to the queue, we refresh, you can see that there is one message in the queue. Also, if we put uh, the name of the rule, uh, the exact name of the rule in our uh, CloudWatch metric, then we can uh, also see that that um, got triggered. So I will just search for that. And you can see there, this is quite bad because it's so zoom in, but uh, we can add all these uh, rules to um, all these metrics to our uh, graph so we can see it. Uh, I think these are good to see as numbers and then remember to add the sum so it's easier to, to see it. And also if you need to modify the period because you might be testing these um, and, and checking these later. So make sure that you have the right period for that metric so you see it there. But you see that we have one failed invocation and one invocation was sent to the dead letter Q. So what happens now? Well, the message is in the queue. And what we can do with that message? Well, we need to process it somehow because we have the queue and it will get full and we need to do something. So there is many things that you can do with the messages in the queue and want to process them. Uh, I think the best way is to trigger a Lambda function when there is some messages in the queue and store them somewhere where you can uh, process them later or then send them back to event bridge or depending on what is your particular use case. In this case, because we are using a third party, there might be some error or something and we might need to analyze the server might be down, there might be a network issue. So we don't want to keep on sending the same messages over and over again after retries because it might not work. So one thing is to process the message, store them in a table, and then trigger an alarm when you have reached a certain threshold of messages uh, that has gone to the queue. So something is wrong, something you should pay attention, and then you should process those messages somehow. Now I will go back to the code in a second and what we will do, well, I will add a Lambda function that will process those messages. And what that Lambda function will do, it will store them in a Dynamo table for you to see them and check them later on. So let's go back to the code and see how to do that. This is uh, very straightforward if you have been working with Lambda for a while. So, uh, but it's very important to handle those events and empty the queue because if not, then it's pointless to have the queue. So 
I will create a new function and I will call it the brew dragon dead letter Q and that will and that function will get triggered by an SQS event when there is a message in the queue. Here you can define the batch size when that function gets triggered. So here you can play a little bit on how many events you want to process at a time. In my case, because it's a demo, I will have one, but you might want to have bigger batches in order to process the events in one go when it gets um, something that, that you want to empty the queue. I will store this in a DynamoDB table. For that, I will be using the simple table. I don't want to get myself complicated in the finding a table. This is not a video about Dynamo, but you can make your table as complex as you need and put whatever you want there. Uh, I will give the policy to my function to be able to save things in the Dynamo table. And also I will be sharing the name of the table with the code as an environmental name uh, variable so I can access it. So with that configuration in my infrastructure, now I will create a new handler file where I will have the definition for this function, the blue dragon that queue letter function, that basically will grab the event from the queue and save it in a DynamoDB table. I'm printing the event in the console so you can see what it comes from that queue or from that uh, message. And then you can see that I'm just uh, grabbing the event record in the position zero and the body because I know what is in the method. If you want to know what is in that uh, event uh, particularly, you can go and check that console log. Basically, this will come uh, as I have the batch size of one. I know there will be one record, so I can just grab the body of the first record. If you have multiple, you might need to iterate and do it in a, in a different way. Um, and I'm basically grabbing everything that is in the body and throwing it into the Dynamo table. You can process this in a better way. Uh, basically what is in the body is everything that is in the event bridge package. It's the envelope and it's also the payload and the details. So you have everything there. And then I'm saving it to Dynamo. So I need to redeploy all this so we can uh, test it. So I see you after the deployment is done. So now that the deployment is done, my function is in place, attached to the queue. Whenever there is a new message in the queue, it gets triggered and puts things in Dynamo. So I will use my serverless console to add uh, the new logs for this blue dragon that queue letter function. I will basically have it there so we can uh, see it. Uh, this is one of my favorite plugins for the uh, serverless. So if you don't know it, I recommend you to check it out. You can see logs, you can see the Dynamo tables without going to console. Um, then what I will do, I make sure that the API destination is still poorly configured. You go into that URL that is broken because we just deploy. Sometimes the infrastructure as code can override that, but it didn't, so that's good. But make sure that everything is good because if that's not broken, then this will not work. <laughs> then we can send the request and we can see that uh, the logs appear. I trigger it twice, so you will see that there is two, but that's my fault. I did it <laughs> without realizing. Uh, there are the logs for the function and you can see that uh, all the information that we print in the console, we can see the, um, the records and the body, um, what we save in the Dynamo table, everything that we printed in that Lambda function is there, so that's good. The body is there. This is what I said, the event rich envelope with the whole details and the whole uh, metadata on top. So that's exactly what I'm writing into my uh, Dynamo table. So if I go to the serverless console and I go and check that table, you can see that I have two items. I, I did it twice. Uh, if I go to the metrics, you will see that there is uh, more invocations and failed invocations. So you will see that as well. This was the video for you today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. The code is linked in the description box. It's in the branch video free. So remember that. And let me know, you want to know more about that cute letters? You want to know more about Evan Rich? That's what the comments are there for. I will make videos that you want to watch. And I'll see you in the next episode of Uber. Ciao, ciao.